Hi, I am Lindsay Weiser, Marketing Manager here at Racksquare Data Centers, and we have a great video for you guys today. We are going to be doing an unboxing of one of our new IBM Power 10s, but I'm going to turn it over to the guys, so stay tuned, and you're in for a treat. Hi, I'm Jason Hardy, General Manager of Racksquare Data Centers. Hi, I'm Joshua Grable, uh, Operations Manager of Racksquare Data Centers. As Lindsay mentioned, today we're going to open one of our IBM Power 10s. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on who Rack Squared is, we are a Columbus-based full-service data center. Uh, we do everything from co-location to fully managed services, and IBM specific, you know, we've got customers who come in here uh, with their own IBM Power, they co-locate it with us, it can be a pure co-location solution, or we can provide storage for them, backup, disaster recovery, management of that server. We also do IBM Power in the cloud. So for those customers that aren't interested in owning one of these themselves, you can buy a piece of ours, host it in our data center, we'll provide all the management. Again, whether it's a production box, whether it's a backup or disaster recovery, we provide a wide range of IBM i-series solutions. So check us out on the web. From there, Josh, you ready to open this thing up? Ready to open it. All right, I'll turn it over to you. So for now, we're actually gonna go ahead and start cutting open this box, take a look what uh, comes inside. As we move along the components in here, one thing you will notice uh, just from the size of the box itself, this server is actually much deeper than the traditional uh, Power 8, Power 9s we used to have. Uh, we come out with the, the rail kit, comes out of the box, and also include any additional optics. This particular model, we did get some uh, additional optics put in place for it. We're running uh, fiber channel cards, so we will be loading VIOS on this particular frame. So we have redundant uh, fiber channel cards and redundant networking adapters. We are going to be, in this case, using uh, the 10 slash 25 gig networking cards and 32 gig fiber channels. Inside the box will include all your proper paperwork, any optics you may have ordered, and any software. We'll also include the cable management piece. One of the things you have to take in consideration with the size of this server is your rack is it deep enough to handle um, not only the cable management piece of it, in addition to the rack itself, you might find yourself not able to close the backs of your rack. So I've seen some videos uh, where people talked about some of these components they don't use. Everything that came in the box, are we going to use all of this stuff, cables, everything, part of our application? Well, typically in our case, what we would use is shorter cables because we it comes with the typical IBM mile long cables. Okay. And this one, honestly, here's a USB extension. No clue. So there's some things here that um, don't necessarily fit our application, but they might fit your application. But IBM seems to have done a pretty good job of including everything that you might possibly need in the box. And when, when testing out fiber cards and uh, checking for any type of zoning, if you get a multi port card in the back of your uh, adapter from a uh, IBM or any other uh, provider in that case, these little adapters, these little fiber channel loopbacks will actually plug into your fiber channel cards so when you actually scan for new hardware it doesn't take a prolonged time to scan and find additional pieces of uh, if you have a virtual tape libraries, uh, sand storage, any type of infrastructure like that and you have a port that's not being used, these little guys will definitely help speed up the process of discovering there's nothing plugged in that port versus having to wait what seems sometimes an eternity and the, uh, if you're using uh, AIX Linux or even the IBM AS400 AS operating system, yeah, of those three. When you get all the package material off the top of the box, you're going to see these two pieces of foam. As we lift off these two pieces on each side, you'll have the box, the uh, new server is located inside the box itself. You have protective covers on each end inside the plastic. You want to be careful when lifting this out, you usually want to use two people. We're going to pick it up, move it out of the way, and clear up the packaging material. 
ahead and box. All right, now that we've got the new server out of the box, what we want to do is start unwrapping it, make sure everything's intact and everything looks good from, uh, from the hardware inspector, make sure we don't get any damage in the packaging. On the ends, as we pull out the plastic, we're going to take off the blue tape on each end and remove the protective covers to protect the front bezel and the back where all our optics are. So now we're going to take a look under the hood and make sure everything we got that we had ordered is in place and everything's stable. One thing you'll notice about this box is that this is a single processor, a single socket, 12 core processor. The other processor is not in place. This one is an IBM Power 10 rated system. We also have maxed out all the memory DIMMs in this box. This little piece of floor here has helped to, uh, with the airflow of the box itself. But one of the interesting aspects of the new Power 10 is the memory DIMMs. This particular frame has multiple memory DIMMs. We actually put in a full terabyte of memory in this particular box. And each of the DIMMs we are using are 64 gig DIMMs. These might not look, a, compared to a traditional memory DIMM you might see around your house or on a, in a different computer, IBM makes these themselves. Uh, Alright, with each of these memory DIMMs, this particular system, we are trying to get up to the 128 gig DIMMs. Right now, memory is getting a little bit harder to find. These are the 64 gig DIMMs, which allowed us to get up to a full terabyte, which actually wrap around to the side here as well. Um, that being said, if you wanted additional memory into this frame, you'd have to use the larger DIMMs, which are a little bit harder to come by, but in this particular case, it met our application needs to go for a single terabyte. Um, one thing on the back here, what we are running as well is, we have, we're going to be using redundant VIOS uh, servers. Uh, we do have redundant 32 gig fiber channel cards, and we also have redundant networking cards. The fiber channel cards, they have position from the factory on the outside here. The uh, 10 slash 25 gig networking adapters are the two cards sitting right here. We also have a SAS controller here for when we do any type of VTL configuration or hookup with this type of device, if we have to use any type of SAS cables or SAS devices um, for our application needs. One of the things that's different from the Power 8 and Power 9 we've seen here is that the old um, HMC, HMC uh, 1 and 2 ports are no longer there. It's using this new card in the back here that we use to tie into the HMC itself. So it's a different type of adapter and interface. Uh, you'll notice that it's, uh, if you start connecting to and if you do use the hardware management console, it's a little different set of process than we have um, in place uh, what you're probably used to. The other thing that does have redundant two uh, thousand watt power supplies uh, for redundancy so this box can actually run on either one of those without losing power so the energy consumption of this compared to prior models is actually a bit less compared to the old power supplies when we're going more of the four thousand watts so josh while you're putting the cover back on there you mentioned that we put a terabyte of memory in this box there is room to expand that is that correct to expand memory in this box, you could go to the larger DIMMs to uh, replace the ones you have to add additional capacity for memory if needed. This box can go up to a higher memory capacity. They also sell another model of this type of box where you have the expended uh, memory cards in the back. Um, I'm being told you are limited in the amount of, you can only go down to a quarter of a processor per uh, partition if you're going to carve this up. Uh, for your i-series licensing. So you have to actually go down to a 0.25 allocation versus you can go down to a, a 20th or 10th of a processor per partition. Cool. Um, you mentioned a uh, fiber card. Do you want to talk about why we've got the fiber cards in there? Yeah, one of the things we do in here <laughs> at Rack Squared, we do use uh, SAN on the back end for our uh, connectivity for our device. If you look at the front of this through the bezel, you see we actually have no internal storage. Our VIOS will boot off the SAN itself. Um, in our case, we're using the IBM's FS7300. Uh, they're all NVMe uh, flash array to boot off VIOS, use those for controls. Also is what we allocate disk to this um, if we're using AIX uh, Red Hana Power or uh, IBM uh, AS400 operating system, so it all boot from the SAN using redundant paths in the back. 
Cool. I know you guys already installed one of these. Um, any you know, feedback on the install when you were doing it or you know, anything you learned as you were doing it that's different from Power 9, Power 8? One thing we did learn is you're going to see a, a definite difference in the HMC configuration when you go in the screen and actually put this in place. The other piece that you're going to notice that a big difference is, is when you rack this. You're going from a traditional, most of these used to be a 4U or a rack unit high server. This one is actually, it's only a 2U format. And also as you expanded it, you notice it's much deeper when it fits into a standard 42 inch rack. Um, we can show you the difference between the two with uh, how it's racked and how it's, uh, it would impact, you know, considerations of where your PDUs are going to sit in the back. So um, anything else that for someone who is ordering a Power 10 or considering ordering one, any other tips or comments you'd want to share about this before we wrap this thing up? One thing I want to add with this particular model, you'll notice we do have a fair amount of I.O. slots on the left-hand side that are free. Because this is a single processor, single socket um, setup, we can only use the I.O. slots on this half of the chassis. So therefore, you are limited in the number of I.O. slots you can have. Um, the other thing that is a limitation of the uh, 1022 is the fact that when we allocate hardware to a partition, you cannot dynamically move hardware between partitions as you could with the uh, legacy models with the 1022. That being said, like a SAS card here, we would have to dedicate it to VIOS and reallocate any type of resources that VIOS is using. So I can't actually take this card and reassign it to a partition while the partition's live and hot. Um, that's one of the limitations of the um, S1022. But if you're using VIOS, in our case, we use redundant VIOS enterprise servers. Uh, we, we typically just reallocate uh, any type of hardware resources to the partitions through VIOS itself versus using a dedicated card. All right. A whole lot of stuff that I'm hoping is more valuable to you than it was me because I don't understand all that. Um, that's why we got Josh here, though, to talk about the details and why he and his team manage these boxes for us. So I hope that was helpful. Um, thanks for joining us. If you've got questions or comments, feel free to uh, leave those for us. And uh, thanks again. Thank you. Well, I hope that video was really helpful and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see more, make sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. And we'll see you next time.